Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning in today. My name is Weinberg, the creator of Learn Neuroradiology. Today, we're going to talk about emergency imaging of brain tumors. We're going to cover the oligodendrogliomas and some of the other uh, more circumscribed and less common low-grade gliomas, uh, so stay tuned. If you haven't seen the other videos in astrocytoma, some of the introductory imaging features, be sure to go back and check those out. Uh, this is part of a series on emergent imaging of brain tumors, uh, so let's move on. Oligodendrogliomas, we talked about it in the classification lecture. These are primary brain tumors that are IDH mutated. They have one P19Q cotyledon. They come in two grades, okay? Grade two, the sort of infiltrating or typical oligodendrogliomas. Then grade three or the higher grade, anaplastic oligodendrogliomas. These theoretically do not transform into grade four tumors. If they do, they may go back and uh, check their histologic diagnosis, check some of the molecular features. Uh, but typically these should not become grade four tumors. Our case here is a 51 year old woman with episodes of spotty vision, right lower extremity in coordination while running errands. Here we see a scout image from a CT. If you look in the middle of the image, there's something a little bit weird going on here. So just be attuned to that. But let's see some images from the actual CT. I'm going to scroll through these for you here. All right, so you can see an abnormality. It's on the patient's right-hand side there. I'm gonna stop here, like in the middle. Sort of an infiltrating, expansile process here. You see some very dense material in the middle there. Uh, that's very dense, very similar to bone, so that's probably some calcification there. So you have a tumor, it's calcified, and I just scroll back and through there a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go to the next image here. Here I've got two windows for a brain window, which was similar to what we scrolled through, a bone window, again, letting you see that dense calcification that's in the middle of that. So when you have calcified lesions, it kind of changes your differential a little bit. We'll talk about it a little bit more in just a second. Uh, on your CT though, you've got a low density kind of expansile mass. It looks like it's in the parenchyma. It is, uh, has some dense calcification and some moderate mass effect there. When uh, we're thinking about a differential, we're thinking about is there a calcified primary tumor? Uh, calcified metastases are possible but less likely. Other things that calcify are vascular malformations, so like AVMs. Uh, they tend to have calcifications in a vascular or tube-like pattern. Wasn't necessarily the case here, but you can't really rule that out. The primary tumors that are known to calcify, okay, pilocytic or pleomorphic xanthoastrocytomas and oligodendrogliomas. Of those, oligodendrogliomas are a lot, are a lot more common. We're going to recommend an MRI. So now on our uh, CT impression, we're going to see there's a hypodense mass in the right inferior frontal parietal lobe, has dense calcification, uh, calcifying primary tumors, oligodendroglioma or PXA, and uh, we want to recommend an MRI for additional evaluation. So now here's some images from the MRI. Here we have a flare. Uh, you see again that mass, the low intensity stuff in the middle, probably those areas of calcification where you're getting signal loss. Here's a T2 just showing the same thing. Kind of ill-defined margins, heterogeneity in the center there. Again, centered around that calcification. Here's our pre and post contrast. Uh, you see again, kind of uh, iso-intense to slightly hypo-intense of the adjacent uh, gray matter. And maybe a little wisp of enhancement in there, but not a lot of very avidly enhancing regions. This is a pretty typical appearance for a grade two oligodendroglioma. Again, we talked about those have to have IDH mutation in 1P19Q coalition. A little bit more common in males, a little bit more common in the fifth and sixth decades, or you can see them uh, a little bit younger patients as well. Uh, these patients are treated by resection. Sometimes they'll get radiation at the time of resection, but most of the time they're going to follow these up. They can really occur anywhere in the hemispheres, but uh, slightly favor the frontal and temporal lobes. Again, the calcification was the key here. That's the un unusual part for most primary tumors, and that's what helps you maybe think it's an oligodendroglioma on the CT. Uh, the pearl that I'm giving you here, again, oligodendroglioma and pleomorphic xanthoracocytomas are the most common calcifying primary brain tumors. For our second case, we're going to look at a case of a 56-year-old woman with increasing fatigue and speech changes. Here I have some images. We're going straight to an MRI here. have diffusion-weighted imaging on the left here. Heterogeneous diffusion appearance, some areas that are a little bit hyper-intense, maybe a more cystic area that's hypo-intense. On T2, we see a cystic region. We see a flat horizontal line through that. 
most anatomic things, remember, like don't form perfect lines like that. That's a fluid level, depending on how that patient's laying there. Uh, so probably there's been some hemorrhage into that. But again, a heterogeneous mass, very heterogeneous, some surrounding areas of edema. On GRE or blood sensitive imaging, again, you see that fluid level or hematocrit level there, some areas of hemorrhage within the central portions of the mass itself as well. Uh, here's flare, just showing kind of the same things, ill-defined margins, lots of mass effect, areas that are very hyperintense towards those that are just a little bit hyperintense to the gray matter. That's uh, so a lot of heterogeneity. Here's our pre and post contrast. Uh, not much that we see on the pre contrast. Lots of heterogeneous enhancement, ill-defined margins, patchy enhancement, peripheral enhancement around the rim of that cystic uh, area with fluid level. So lots of ugly looking enhancement. When we see this, we're thinking it's a high-grade lesion. So this is a case of an anaplastic oligodendroglioma. These are the more aggressive oligodendrogliomas. They're more likely to have hemorrhage and enhancement like you saw in this case. Again, the true 1P19Q cotyledid oligodendrogliomas theoretically don't become grade 4 tumors. Uh, so high-grade oligodendrogliomas, like the one in this case, they can look just like grade 4 tumors. So on your differential, you're not really, you're not really saying like, oh, I think this is a high-grade oligodendroglioma. When you're reading this CT or even the MRI, you're probably just suggesting that this is a high-grade glioma. This one just turned out to be an anaplastic oligodendroglioma. Here again are those findings. It's kind of a little bit of a summary of these two oligodendrogliomas here. We have this one with dense calcification that we saw first. Again, oligodendrogliomas are the primary brain tumors most likely to calcify. Anaplastic oligodendrogliomas uh, look a little bit worse. They really mimic GBMs. And in most cases, if you said this is a GBM, uh, you probably are, are right on track there. Uh, so those anaplastic ones can look pretty bad. Uh, this is a summary of some other low-grade tumors that you might see. We're not really going to cover them here. You don't really need to know about them so much in the emergent setting. These tend to be more circumscribed tumors that have uh, well-defined margins, less edema. This is a case of a grade 1 pilocytic astrocytoma in the posterior fossa here, kind of in the inferior uh, at the pontomedullary junction there. Here we see a DNAT. This is, again, just a very well-defined, predominantly cystic tumor, maybe a little wisp of enhancement. These are often indifferentiable from gangliogliomas, which is the case here. Maybe gangliogliomas could be said to have a little bit more enhancement, which you might see a little bit there. Pleomorphic xanthroastrocytomas, we talked about a little bit in this. They have some different features. They tend to look worse uh, than their grade. Uh, you can have a lot of heterogeneous features, cyst formation. They may calcify, as we talked about earlier. And also, this dural tail or dural margin is pretty typical for a PXA. So if you see those, just be aware that they exist. You might have to look them up. If you see them, they tend to have well-defined margins, not a lot of edema. So in those cases, you can suggest that they're low-grade tumors. Um, many of these low-grade tumors are going to look the same, okay? Uh, some features may help you differentiate them. Again, the enhancing nodule, more common in a pilocytic astrocytoma, PXA, and ganglioglioma. The description of classic bubbly appearance, that's a favored test question. Uh, you're going to call that a DNET or dysembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor. Many times if you see these, they're all going to be included in the differential anyway. Uh, when you see these primary brain tumors, you want to suggest that they're a primary brain tumor. You want to suggest that whether you're looking at a low versus high grade lesion, in many cases, the specific tumor doesn't matter. Now, when an alternate diagnosis exists or is likely, you definitely want to suggest that, right? So if you have infection or suspicion for infection, metastatic disease or lymphoma, that can pretty significantly change the management. Now, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the video later on mimics. Uh, so be sure to tune back in and see that uh, to talk about that a little bit. Uh, with that said, thanks for tuning in today, learning a little bit more about oligodendrogliomas and the uh, a few uh, little tidbits about some of the other low-grade tumors. Be sure to tune back in for the rest of the videos. We're going to talk about some of the non-gliomas next. Uh, we'll cover some of the mimics and we'll cover some of the red flags uh, that you might run into in brain tumor imaging in the emergent setting. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button below. And uh, thanks.